we bring to you number eight of our study about evil. Again, a little, every time I'm going to say it, you got to get the other seven. You've got to listen to this study completely. This is not one to, well, I like this one. Well, I'm not going to listen to that one. That doesn't interest me. Well, that one looks interesting. Uh, not that. You've got to get them all. And again, you can send these out, like them, share them, tell your friends about them. So Acts chapter 14, verse 2, we're, we're taking five at a time. We're under the category or the subtitle of adjective, describing. And we've been looking at evil be in the description. And let's just run through it again. We have evil animals. We have an evil congregation. We have an evil place, evil generation, evil diseases, the evil men of Shechem, evil doers, evil man. Uh, the thoughts are against me for evil. Evil doers, evil woman. Evil men, evil people. Uh, we have the definition of evil. Naughty. It's not good. <laughs> Look at Jeremiah. We have evil fruit. We have, I'm just trying to find it real quick. And there's evil and adulterous generation. Evil servant. Evil spirits. And last week we left off with the works of the world are evil. And again, I got to get them all. Acts chapter 14, verse 2. Now remember, as, before we, we're, we're looking at a vast number of the word evil. And this is a study. We're on page 6 of page uh, 52 pages. There's different categories. Right now we're under adverbs. I have missed I may have missed one. I may have said, you know what, that one's repetition, I don't want to do it, or it's not listed. But when we get study when we get done with this study, Lord willing, we may not cover every single time the word evil shows up in the Bible, but we're going to get a greater understanding of evil. So Acts 14, 2, the Bible says, But the unbelieving Jews, not saved, stirred up the Gentiles. And made their minds evil afflicted. First time that word shows up. Against the brethren. So here is unsaving Jews. Got the unsaved Gentiles together. And they attacked. Attacked. The brethren to save people. With the mind. And we have made their minds evil afflicted. So it's attack of the mind. And afflicted is to impress, to move, or touch either in person or in interest. Having suffered some change of external force, loss, danger, and the like, as we are more or less afflicted by the failures of the bank. And this is out of 1828 dictionary, Webster's. Touch the feelings, have the feelings excited, as afflicted with cold or heat. Having the passions move as afflicted with sorrow and joy. The Jews in the verse were against the apostles and the brethren. Apostles are the brethren, but against the apostles for preaching and teaching Jesus Christ. And the Gentiles that were there were listening. And they were obeying some of them. And the Jews hated Jesus. Hated his testimony. And how dare you take this Jesus Bosley, our Messiah, which he is. How dare you take it to those dirty, nasty dogs. How they thought of the Gentile people. You're taking something Jewish that we reject, the Israelites. And you're going to bring it to those nasty. We're going to stop that. And then, again, the Gentiles are unclean, dead dogs. Ill-treated humans to the eyes of the Jews. And they stirred up the Gentiles. 
those mean, nasty, wicked people against the Christians. And you got today, you got organizations, number one here, the Jehovah Witnesses. And here in Daytona Beach, many of the Jehovah Witnesses are African Americans, colored. When I grew up, they were called colored, okay? I don't get in with the modern words and stuff like that. They were they were colored or black to me. That's you don't like it. That's look at a box of Crayola crayons and pick out it says black and one says white. One says tan. All right. I'll go by the, the, the words of Crayola. And if the black people were to know what was written in the watchtower of years and years ago in history, the black people were considered devils, demons, never to be saved, the outcasts of all society. And yet now today they are using them to promote their business and increase their funding where they're vile, wicked, and, and unclean people. And that's what the Jews are doing with the Gentiles. You, you are wicked, vile people. We're, we're God's people. And they're using the Gentiles to go after the Christians and the apostles. So evil has been, has evil has not been anything good. And our lesson so far will not be to the end. The minds and thoughts of the Gentiles listening were being evil afflicted. They're listening to the apostles. They're listening to the Christians. And now they're listening to the Jewish people. And to the effects of what the Jewish people are saying. Their thoughts and their heart were going to evil. Where the thoughts and the hearts of the Gentiles that were talking and listening to the Gentiles were turned to holy and purity and pleasing God. And you remember, we, we looked at the verse that, you know, good is good and evil is naughty in Jeremiah. You have the good is good here. The apostles teaching the doctrine of Jesus Christ and they're getting saved. Now you have the naughty, the, the, the bad evil. Here are Gentiles. Listen to the Jews and their mind is getting corrupted, evil, as much as a person would listen to the Catholic Church and their mind is being alienated from God, thinking they're doing God's service. Well, I've got to be right because my church tells me to do this and I do this. And how dare you be, I had a woman yesterday tell me, you're holier than now. And you're a glutton because, you know, I'm a vegan, veg, a vegetarian, and I don't eat meat, and I go to church, and I reach the inner part of whatever garbage she's trying to sell me. And I said, listen, that, that's not good enough. And she got offended because, oh, tell me I'm not good. No, no. And then I told her, I'm a sinner too, and I'm a sinner by saved by grace, and I'm a sinner saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And her mind had been alienated with religion or whatever you want to call it. And then, she, you know, her attack on me, you know, because I eat meat, I'm a glutton. Well, you could attack me other ways of glutton. All right, you want to attack me on glutton? And you say, you know, I got a bag of jelly beans here. Eh? It's a treat for this type of season. I don't usually buy jelly beans. And there's certain foods now I'm learning with my diet and my health. I don't buy them, but. They are taking the mind of the Gentiles who are now being turned to Christ and destroying a mind, evil affected the mind. In Galatians 4.18, be it is but it is good to be zealous, affected, is that word, always in good thing. And not only when I am present with you. And here's the only two places that the word affected shows up. And affected here in, in Acts 14 too, it's evil. They're turning their minds away from God. And in Galatians 4.18, it is zealous good. So you can affect yourself for evil as the Jews were doing, or you can affect yourself for good. And that is the main study and why I'm telling you, you got to watch all the videos. Because evil can be sin. 
Evil may not be sin, it may be a consequence of sin. And then again, evil may be sin and the consequence of sin. And one of the videos back, I talked about the marijuana. The marijuana plant. There it is. I don't know. I never, I've seen it and you, I guess you can say it, it's a good looking plant. Like tobacco, I've never seen a tobacco plant, but it's there. It probably does things that plants do, take in the carbon dioxide and put out, I, I don't know, I'm not a plant expert. All right. The plant itself, marijuana, the plant itself, tobacco, barley, which makes alcohol. You can use barley to make bread. You can use barley for all kinds. Barley's in the Bible. But barley, tobacco, marijuana, the plant itself is not evil. Now, what you do with tobacco, what you do with the marijuana plant, what you do with the bar barley now becomes a sin. You take the marijuana plant, you take the tobacco, yeah, tobacco plant, and you dry them up, you crush them up, and you put them in, in filtered paper, and you light them on fire and put them to your lips and inhale the smoke. That is sin. That is evil. I don't know what you do with barley to make alcohol. I don't want to know. But whatever you do with that barley to make the alcohol, that's sin. And then consuming the alcohol, that's sin. It also has an evil consequence. Marijuana can blow your mind. So evil is smoking marijuana. And the consequence could be evil blowing your mind. All right. Smoking cigarettes and any tobacco products. The evil is you're doing it. You're not ought to be doing it. What is the evil consequence? COPD. Emphysema. Lung cancer. Death. The wages of sin is death. And I'm not going to get into it, but you understand. So, Webster's Dictionary, 1828 Dictionary, number one and number two definition I gave you, being touched, but stronger is number three, having the passion move. The Gentiles were listening in passion, a good passion, and the Jews came and made the good passion evil. The Jews are or have been known in the Bible to be rebellious against the nature of God, even in the Old Testament, to God's word and to Jesus, the Messiah. I am going to assume the, the evil affected, the Gentiles became rebellious in the passion that moved against the apostles. Now, I'll tell you what would be evil, and I've seen this evil in the public ministry. We go out and we preach the gospel. What would be the afflicted evil of the minds for someone against a street preacher? Hiring a DJ to overpower with Satan's music against God's gospel. You got to the left of me, you got Satan's music. May you got the gospel being preached. Satan's music can be heard a little louder than what the voice of God's giving, me, but yet the gospel can be preached out. So what is the evil intent I'm trying to show you? There are people who go through the farmer's market singing the song and listen to the melody in their head because it's going into the ears and into the heart. Have you not ever been in a grocery store and they're playing the music overhead and whether it's saved or love and you're going to the and you're singing the song fully that's on the overhead and you don't even know you're singing it. That's what I'm talking about. Evil inflected your mind that you know what that song is and now you're singing as a Christian. What's the good part of, of, of the illustration you gave, Stiley? We had for a time, we had one group of uh, uh, vendors there that as we're setting up, they would quote to me John 3.16 entirely and correctly while I was setting up. Now that is a good effective Galatians 4.18. Now they weren't saved, but still. What is evil and what is good? I'll give the two illustrations. As a Christian 
singing to yourself the old songs that you remember that are in the overhead. Or being able to quote scripture. So we have an evil, rebellious passion against Romans 1.30. Romans 1.30. Backbiters, haters of God. Okay, we're in a bad list right now. Disrespectful, proud, definitely in a bad list. If this was a neighborhood, you would not want this to be your neighbor. Well, who's your neighbor over there? That's disrespectful. Well, who lives across the street? Well, that's a uh, backbiter. Well, who lives on the other side of you? Boasters. Who's the guy behind you? Proud. <laughs> uh, you need to get a real estate agent and you need to get the Holy Spirit to, to move yourself. Inventors, here we go, of evil things than disobedient to parents. That's not a good neighborhood. So things, nouns, I'm a big fan of nouns and verbs. Person, place, or thing, object, and an evil thing is one of the causes of sin. An inventor is one that makes up or designs the world of evil, the things made by invented by man. What would be things invented that would be in this list? I'm glad you asked. Cigars, cigarettes, alcohol, weapons, drugs, torture, movies. Television, porn, media, advertising, poison. And I can go on. Can you think of something that has been invented by man that is used to do harm, to do injustice, to do threat, to kill, to maim, or injure another person or animal? With no good intention. Now I'm not talking. Uh, this came to mind. I'm not talking like a fish hook. I mean, you cast a fish hook in the in the in the water, and you catch a fish. You're going to catch that fish. You're going to clean that fish, and then you're going to flay that fish, and you're going to cook it. You're going to eat it. Okay. You're going to survive. You need to eat. All right. You take a, a sharp sickle, and you go through your, your the grain, and you and you take the grain, and you make bread. I'm not talking about that. that. That's not evil. You know, when you make an electric chair or the the, 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 the gallows or the, the injection for uh, for a capital punishment and the crime, that's not evil. That's Bible. But what about all the instruments that came up with the Nazi party to destroy and eliminate the Jewish and other people? Now that was evil invention, inventors of evil things. What about a guy who take a knife that you could whittle uh, wood and make a, a carving, which is evil, an idol, but you can take a knife and, and you, you can cut an apple in half and have an apple. You can give half an apple to yourself and half an apple to somebody else. There are good things you can do with a knife. Or you can take a knife and you can murder somebody or you can torture them or just cut them because you want to cut them. You see what I'm saying? You got to get all the slay because listen, a knife is not evil. But then again, a knife can be evil. You got to get all the things. So the evil here is things that are made by man to injure man and to cause sin. And it's out there. First Corinthians 15. So you got to be careful with this study. You can't go, it's evil, it's bad, because is a, is a gun evil? No. Is a gun evil? Yes. Wait a minute, Stiley. Well, not. If someone says, Stiley, I'll tell you what I want to do. 
I want to take you out in the woods, get, get you everything you need to do and permit and stuff like that and teach you. But I want to take you out in the woods and I want you to shoot a deer. And I probably throw up, but I, we'll go out and shoot a deer. I want to show you how to clean it and how to cook it. That's good. I've had deer meat. I enjoy that besides cutting the animal up where I probably throw up and get sick. But yeah, that, that's good for a gun. I and mean, if somebody came to my door and I knew and they said, hey, say, hey, I went hunting. We had we, we shot a bear. You want to try some bear meat? Like, yeah, I had bear meat before. I'll give it a try. Somebody invites me over to their house and say, listen, we're going to we're gonna have food here. And they don't tell me that I'm eating aardvark. That they shot an aardvark or whatever. I don't know if you can eat it, but. All right, and I find out I like it. Hey, and if I don't like it, well, still, the guy likes it. He shot it, and he cooked it, and, okay? But what if I take a gun that is not evil, and I go into a movie theater, I go into a school, I go into a courtroom, I go into a public place, a mall, or I just start shooting people up. Now, that's evil. This is, this is, take a shot, okay. Take a, 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 a shotgun. I'm going out in the woods. I'm going to use a shotgun. And I think that's what you do. I'm going to shoot a deer. All right? Shot a deer. We clean it up. It's in the freezer. And I take up that shotgun and I go to the mall and I go shoot people up. I'm using the very same shotgun. It was good to shoot the deer for food, but it's not good to shoot the people at the mall. Now you take, okay. Let's take, for instance, let's say I always wanted to be a police officer. Let's take, I'm a police officer. I'm not, but I am. Illustration. I go out in the, and I go out in the field with a shotgun and I shoot the deer. We cut the deer open. We, we put them in the freezer. We're going to make deer meat out of them. We're going to make stew. And we're, we're going to enjoy the deer meat. That's good. I don't use a shotgun to go to the mall and kill people. Nope, I don't do that. I'm on my patrol. And there is a man that is holding a, a child hostage at gunpoint. And I'm there with, with my shotgun and I, I'm in position. I got the guy in scope. That guy fires a shot at me and is a risk for that child. I shoot my, my, my uh, shotgun properly as I've been trained. And I take that man down and he dies or is injured. Either or. That's not evil. Now, after my duty, I do all my paperwork. I go home, I grab the same shotgun, and I run to the parking lot, and I start killing people. Now I've done evil with the same shotgun. And what gun activists and gun right people do, you got to explain yourself. Because there are some gun activities that are evil. And there are some gun activities that are not. Hey. You want to get me and my daughter the money to, to get the license and get the training to shoot a gun and, and get the permit in Florida and pay for a simple gun? Nothing extraordinary. This is a very simple, the simplest guns you can get. I'll do it. I'll do it. You're going to pay because I ain't going to pay for it. But if I'm gonna go if I'm gonna go out and buy a gun specifically to kill somebody, the Bible calls that murder. And even as a Christian, now this is where this is where you're gonna go wrong with me, but if you are a Christian, you say I'm gonna buy a gun, I will shoot him for protection. And I I'll kill him if I have to. When Doag was under the orders of the government to kill the priest. Did God record that the priests fought back? And no, they didn't. Did the people in Fox's Book of Martyrs fight back when they went under persecution and, and torture and death for the word of God? No, they didn't. So when you get into these gun situation, activism and rights and all that, it's like the study of evil. You gotta get the whole picture. Am I against guns? No. I'm not. Depends how you're gonna use it.
And I think some Christians are going to be charged with murder if they got the intent of their heart, like Saul had the intent of his heart to kill those priests. And he was charged with the murder, even though Doag did it. God charged Ahab for the murder of, of um, Jezebel killed, had him killed, um, Naboth. And Jezebel didn't do it. Jezebel had the, the people of the city kill Naboth. She was charged with it, and Ahab was charged with the murder. I know you want to protect your family. I know you haven't killed anybody, but you can think it, and that's a sin. The Bible calls in both testaments, hating someone is an act of murder. Got to be careful. There's a very fine line. And I may cross it by saying it's murder, but we're talking about evil. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. I probably lost somebody, but verse 32. If after the manner of men I fought the beasts of Ephesus, what advantage what advantage it me if the dead rise not? He's talking about the resurrection. I mean, if Christ never rose from the dead. Let us eat, drink, and tomorrow we die. Oh, people love that. People are saying that, they, that the, the, there was no resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Paul said, if there was no resurrection, then eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow we die. We're going to hell. Be not deceived. <laughs> what I just said, don't be deceived. Evil communication, here's our word, corrupt good manner. So the discourse is an evil discourse. What are you doing? That's what communication is. Communication is not talking. What are you doing? What's your conduct? Because it's followed by good manners. We all want good manners. And you can't have good manners with evil communication. You can't say thank you or you're welcome when you're tripping somebody purposely. <laughs> thank you for letting me trip you. Oh, you're welcome. When you are doing evil, when you are doing evil doings, your manner, the way you live, your character is being corrupt. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian. I am a member of the Anchor Baptist Church, and my pastor thinks highly of me. I, I am involved in public ministries. I, I, I try my best for the Lord. I love the Lord. And I go walking around drinking a bottle of cherry Coke in a brown paper bag. When the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. They say, Stolly, what's wrong with that? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's cherry coke. They don't know that. 99% of the other people in the world that have seen people with a, with a paper bag drinking, it's a bottle of alcohol. 1% chance is it's cherry coke cold. I got to sneeze for forgive me. Ugh. How are you? I go walk around with a white pen in my mouth. I don't have one. I don't even have one. Anymore. I used to. I, I had an unsaved man tell me this. Long after I quit smoking. I didn't used to smoke. I used to... The guy told me, he says, you know that, that, that pen you got in your mouth? I used to carry a pen in my mouth. I said, and he goes, you know what that looks like? I said, what? He says, it looks like you're smoking a cigarette. And that's when that verse, abstain from all appearance evil. I'm sitting, my, and, you know, I, I'm doing work and I got a pen sticking out of my mouth. You know what it looks like? It looks like I'm smoking a cigarette. And I ought not to look like I'm smoking a cigarette. I ought not to be having evil communications. When I work for the newspaper and I go out in the middle of the night, dropping off my newspapers at various locations, 
I had a time where at one place I dropped off my papers on this one roof. And I had to use the potty. Everything's closed at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. Except there was a bar next door. Now, listen, my bosses knew I was safe. And my, my co-workers knew I was safe. I had a testimony. So, Stiley, you went into the bar to go use the bathroom. Nope, I did not. I went off in the bushes, and I'm, I'm going to be trying to be clean, but I had, when it came to number one or number two at that spot, I went off in the bushes. Why didn't you go in the bar? What if somebody saw me coming out of that bar or walking in that bar with a brand new Christian? And Paul talks about that with, with, with eating food to idols. If I offend, a young Christian. Well, you know, Stiley, he goes to my church. You know, I saw him come out of a bar the other night. That's not the stain from all appearance of evil. Well, you, you're just going there to go potty. I knew that. What if my pastor saw? Now, he figured with me. What if, my co what if we had a brand new co-worker? Hey, boss, you know what I just saw, Stalin? You, you know, he, he, he's, on, he's on duty right now. Yeah, I just saw him come out of a bar. Now, presently, my bosses would not believe that I've come out of a bar. I mean, they, they, they knew my sincere citizenship of my Christian. What about the employee? What about my coworker? What about anybody else who knows who I am saw me come out of a bar? Or drinking out of a paper bag, or having a white pen in my mouth. Especially, especially when, when I, people who knew I smoked and knew I gave the glory to God, and the way that I quit smoking was only to the glory of God. Well, gee, looks like you got another cigarette. Great glory to God. And this is the second time the word corrupt or corruption has been used in the study of evil. So you will find corrupt. The government has been corrupt. Does that mean it's getting better? No, it don't. Evil actions rot. They rust. They decay. They fall apart. Your manners, your actions, and your character. Evil actions bring no good results. And even if it's something plain and simple, such as I got to use the bathroom, only place is open is a bar. Either way. By the way, come to find out after I was on that route for a while, you're showing the Lord. There was a porta potty put up. You know, I just had to drive over. I call ahead of me and say, you know, I'm leaving this spot, and they they knew me. I have a, I have a weak stump, and I just drive over. And I could walk over, but it was easier to drive. And God provided a porta potty there. And the place there was a park, and they had public bathrooms that were locked at that hour. And only for by the grace of God, God said, you know, I'm, I'm just going to have him put a porta potty and it was unlocked and go in there. Use it. So, God will help you not to be evil. God will help you to keep your character clean if you want to. I mean, I grew up, uh, I grew up in a place called Bank Street, New London. I wasn't a Christian then, but I wouldn't go witnessing at night on Bank Street, and I'm a street preacher. I wouldn't go witnessing even with another person with me, one-on-one. -on -one. I wouldn't be talking to the women on Bank Street, New London, because at night, Bank Street, New London had the pro prostitution, okay? Well, I'm giving that prostitute a the gospel, and we're giving her gospel trap. Not anybody who's driving by, he maybe he, him and that guy are probably making a deal. If, if I'm going to go witness the prostitution, I bet do it during the day and 
So you got to look at your actions and you got to think as a Christian, what are other people going to think? What will it do to your character? Because when you wound your character, that scar may last for life. Your manner. I mean, you you're, you can say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I never mean it. And Paul speaks about that in Corinthians. There's a godly sorrow and then there's a sorrow to repentance. And God can't work with your sorrow if it's not with repentance. Of godly sorrow. Galatians 1.4. So you see how evil is coming out? Evil may be innocent. What's anybody going to think? Yeah. What are they going to think? I mean, come on, let's look at it. Let's look at it, young lady. You're going to fool around with men and go to church. Proclaim as a Christian, and then you're going to carry a baby for nine months, and you're not married. What kind of communication is that? I mean, we know what causes pregnancy. You can't hide that fact. Well, I slip. I should. And for nine months, you're going to tell all the world you were Christian. And then rest of that life of that child. It's the same thing goes for abortion. People will know that you had a baby and you aborted it. What have you done to your character? I've always said, and my, my wife Tracy liked it, is, when we see somebody and it's weird, odd, I always say there's a story. And every single person, whether it be weird or it would be great, whatever it is, there's a story. And not everybody reads the same pages and comes up with the same classification. There are people who, who know me. And know my street ministry. Man, he, he's a great Christian. No, I'm not. But I, that's what they think. Wow. And there are Christians that uphold that style he goes with his daughter. And trains his daughter. And trains his family. Want to train another. A, a wife. But wow. You know. You're so remarkable. That you do that. And then there are people. There are cuss words that come to mind. Of how they would describe me. And they use those cuss words. <laughs> I'll tell you another story. We'll move uh, Galatians one four, and then we'll move on to Galatians one four. Here's, an, here's, a, here's, a, here's a great illustration. Again, at the farmers market. I'm going to teach you what I know. I was told by a saved man that there was a person there, a vendor, and they hated my guts, absolutely hated me, and they, they thought evil against me. The study. And we got in battle with the police. Well, they got in battle with the police. I just, you know, calmly did what I needed to do and pray. And God provided ways. God opened up doors and God shut doors. And we've been there for almost four or five years, maybe six. This woman told the guys, you know what? I may not like what he's saying. Now, here's a, here's a character change. Here's a communication change of her about me. I was the scum of the earth. But that guy is dedicated. That guy is, oh, he's always here. And he preaches the same, well, teaches and preaches, however she looks at it, the same thing. And then she grew to respect him. May not like it, what I had to say, but respect him. So your character and your communication in your manner, somebody thought it was wicked and vile and unclean, and they can change. I didn't change. Now imagine if I go do something pure and unclean. 
unpure and unclean, defiled. Now what's she going to think? And the world's watching you, Christian. You better believe it. Galatians 1, 4. Who gave himself for our sins, Jesus, that he might deliver us from the present evil world. According to the will of God, there's a will of God, and our Father. Ooh, that's a big one. The world is evil. Plain and simple. The realm of the holiness of God, the world is no good. And yet Christians choose to be worldly Christians. You're an evil Christian. The world is under the curse of the fall, Genesis 3. And the only deliverance of sins and from this world is Jesus Christ. The present evil world can be read. The present evil word can be read as you presently read the word today. The world grammatizes sin and unholiness and evil. That's their action word. Present evil world. You can't say anything good about the world, Christian. When the Bible says, nope. Present evil world. Let's go over to John 7, 7 real quick. We got one more, we got one more topic of this, but John 7, 7. John 7, 7. We talked about this before. John 7, 7. The world cannot hate you. People stop right there, but that's not a period. It's a semicolon. Stop, but we're going to move on. But me, it hated. Jesus, it hated. The world hates Jesus, Christians. They don't love you. They hate you and they use you. Because I testified against it. I testified of it, the world, that the works thereof, the world, are evil. The works of the world are evil and the world is evil. Galatians. 3 5. Last one. Today. Galatians 3 5. Galatians 3 5. Page is sticking together again. I like that. Bible sticks. My Bible sticks. All right. 3 5. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, Holy Spirit, and worketh the miracles among you. Do it, he it by the works of the law, or by hearing of the. That's not what I want. Colossians three five. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Colossians three five. I'm sorry. Mortify dead, mortician. Therefore, your members which are on the earth. The world. Fornication. Uncleanness. Inordinate affection. This is that bad neighborhood. Evil compensations. Yeah, and covetous, which is idolatry. Okay. So con conspicuous. The harder, the more I say it, the harder it gets. To covet or lust after. To desire or covet. The so lust. 1818. 1828 Webster's Dictionary. Lust, unlawful, irregular desire of sexual pleasure. In a more general sense, I think that was general, but in a more general sense, the coveting of carnal things. Or the irregular appetite for the worldly good. Whoa. Webster. Incl inclination of unlawful enjoyment. Wow. I hope. I hope they put that definition in the Webster School Dictionary. Not. That's a mouthful. That came out of the dictionary. Webster's Dictionary. Evil would be desire that is all sinful. And injuries to the body. Sodomy. The gay and lesbian community at large is a perfect example. Is a nature in male to a, the desire of sexual 
of another male? No. And has female sexuality desired another female? That's not the desire that God made. God made man, he made woman. Their parts interlock. Male parts and male parts don't interlock. Female parts and female parts, there is no interlock. And I'm trying to be clean. And then sexual fantasies, which are not going to happen, is immoral. It's unclean. Romans 1, 26 to 27. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affliction. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, lesbianism. And bestiality. And likewise also the men. Having the na natural use of women. That's what man is supposed to do. Man and a woman. Burn in their lust. Thank you Webster. One toward another. Men with men. Working that which is. That was never the designer. Do not say that God loves the homosexual and the gay people too. No he doesn't. He says it is an abomination. Your sexual perverted acts of the gay community are against the Bible. Male and female. And not men and a woman, or a man and women, or men and men all together. One man, one woman, husband and wife, marriage bed. Adulterers and whoremongers, God shall judge. Receiving themselves the recompense of the error which was meant. Don't believe, don't believe those television, they're holding them and God loves us. No, he don't. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 28. But I say unto you, that who sort of looketh on a woman to lust after her with... Let me try it again. I got excited. But I say unto you, Matthew 5, 28. That who sort of looketh on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. As much as a fool that has said in his heart there's no God, as you look at that woman and you have your sexual fantasies about that woman, you committed adultery with that woman. And you don't have to take her into a bedroom. You don't have to take her into a motel. You don't have to take her in the backseat of a car. All you got to do is look and lust. Look and lust. That's opposite of look and live. Look and live is Jesus. Look and lust is concupiscence. The more I get say it, the harder it's going to get. Carnal things. I'm talking about just sex. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't we have this list before? Alcohol, cigars, cigarettes, drug, sugar. Oh, boy. Style, you're guilty. That's why you got diabetes. I guess I'm evil. That's why I got 1 John 1 9. If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me my sins and cleanse me from all righteousness. God, I bought a bag of jelly beans just for a treat. I'm sorry, I bought me a bag of jelly beans. Whatever your sugar, whatever you're not supposed to eat, you're eating. That's a sin. That is evil. Conspicuous. Right, go against. When's the last time you heard that preached? Most di diabetes is not hereditary. Mine is. My diabetes, it's it's a family long thing. And it's also my fault. And my fault. Conjunction, conjunction made me a sinner. I can't blame it all on mom and grandma and grandpa and dad and all that. I had a greater part in my sin. Automobiles and collections, etc., etc. So lust, desire for the sin and for the wickedness. <clears throat> and it doesn't just be sexual. You lust after it. Paul puts the word in, I think it's Roman, lust and coveting together and coveting and lust. I have not known coveting unless I, the lust. If you really want it. You're on the borderline of sinning again. Oh, good. He got off gun control. If you want that gun to kill somebody. Oh, shut up, Stiley. Am I right or wrong?
You want to get a gun to go shoot somebody. If a man looks at who's ever looking upon a woman to lust after his heart, has already committed adultery. Is your heart to get that gun to shoot somebody? How about the video game? You love it's 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 not human. What's in your heart when you're playing that video game? Well, I play a military video. Have you been sent by the President of the United States to go and fight a war? No. Are you thinking about it? Yeah. Are you against pornography? A man looking at a woman on pornography? Or a man looking at a woman on the street? Oh, oh, I wish. Oh. Yeah, I'm against that. Are you somebody? Oh, I wish I could get a gun to shoot. Somebody. Oh, I just want to go shoot. Somebody. I want to. I want to get to the top level of this of this game. I really want to get into that. What's the difference? Oh, I just want to get some of that that chocolate cake. Oh, with that chocolate frosting. Oh, get get me a, a, a couple of scoops of that nice ice cream. Mm, that's diabetes thing. The cake is against diabetes, the frosting is against diabetes, and the ice cream is against diabetes. Would it be a gun? Would it be sugar? Would it be sex? Would it be alcohol? Would it be tobacco product? Would it, oh, I got a desire. I want that kind of car. I just, you know, number one, the heartbeat and the, uh, drive. You lust to get that car? Do you lust that career? Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, in, in, or an infection, evil compensation. There I go again. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Oh, I'm against those Catholics and their statues and that statue of Mary. Oh, if I could just get all these stuffed animals, get the entire set, it'll be worth thousands of dollars. Idolatry. Your collections can be a sin. You're not relying on God. I'll end for now. I'll give you guys a break. Probably people turned this off a long time ago, but give these out to your friends. If you cut and spice and you do any error to these, God knows I don't. They're not copyrighted. Like, share, get them out. Get it all.